Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Creative Bubble. I'm Cheryl with Creative Reads and Flowers, and now that you are all bubblers, I'm going to start giving you tips and tricks that I use when I make my reads. One thing that I've been asked before is how do you make a wire form wreath into a working form? So today I'm going to show you how I accomplish this. I'm going to be using an 18 inch wire box form, wreath form, but you can use any size you want. And we're just gonna use Chanel stems. These I, I got from Craft Outlet. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. You can get them at any hobby store. So let's change our camera view and get started. This is our 18 inch wire form. We have our wire stems. And today I'm gonna to be using DAP, oops, DAP Rapid Fuse. This dries very quickly. And I wanna say they say it dries in about five minutes. And this is what we're gonna to use to help keep our Chanel stems from slipping all over our form. There's a couple of ways you can do it, but today I decided to do it with the DAP Rapid. So we're gonna take that off and get your DAP Rapid ready. And I'm going to put my Chanel stems on the outside ring and this second ring, the one up from the middle. You wanna put them about four to five inches apart. I pull it down here because it's easier for me. I don't have to lift my form. I'm gonna wrap it around this crossbar. Now, you just take, I just take and wrap it around the crossbar and I'm gonna give it one good twist. And this leaves a very nice long stem for you to work with or, yeah. And how I do this then, I'm just gonna take it over here. My stem, the short one, is a little over four, not quite five inches. So I'm just going to take and use my shorter one. I'm going to measure it. I'm going to turn my form. And I'm going to take my next stem or your pipe cleaner if you're using that. I want to make sure they're even. And this is where people do it differently. And I'll show you both ways. Now, this will slip back and forth if you just wrap it around the wire. Some people take this. Put it around the wire above it, or the ring above it. Oops, I crimped my stem. Bring it down, and then tie it. Hold it really tight and tie it. My problem with that is I'm going to be making, using this form to make a very large wreath. So I want, I want my stem to be long. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put it back under here. So I have it just around the bottom wire. I'm gonna make sure I have it in the place I want it, which is right here. I'm going to tie it a couple of times very tight. And then I'm gonna take my DAP Rapid Fuse. And normally I do have plastic under this, but today we're not going to. But I'm going to take my DAP Rapid Fuse and I'm just going to put over top of my stem and I'm just going to let it sit there like that. And I'm going to hope, I'm going to turn it over and I'll do the same on the back. This is the shorter stem. It does take it a few minutes to dry, so if you want to wait on it, that's fine. I'm gonna pull it over here. Dap wrap it, if you do get it on your fingers, it is sticky. So you could put, I have a Band-Aid on this finger because I burnt myself yesterday with the hot glue gun. But per Regina Sellers, having Band-Aids in your toolbox is a good idea because it also helps when you're working with, um, it helps cushion the heat from the hot glue too. But it would also 
keep the glue from sticking to your fingers. Once again, I'm going to take it. Turn it down real tight. And I think what I'll do before I glue it, so I don't have to try to touch it, is I'm going to see which one of these is. If one's longer than the other, I usually go with the shorter one. So that would be this one here. And this is where I'm going to want my next one. I mean, you can measure them out if you want to take the time to use it. But this is a really good method and it doesn't take quite as long. As it would. And they don't have to be exact. I'm going to actually make a poof ruffle wreath with this and then add ribbons. That's why I want to have. Now we can go back. Let's see. Is this the one? It's still, it still spins. So we'll, well, let's see. I didn't dab it. Okay. This one, as you can see, the dab is, it doesn't move. So what we're going to do, and I suppose if you don't think they'll move on you, you could wait and do it after you get them all on. Lamba has chewed up my clothespin, so we're going to use it. I'm just going to put my dap wrap it on. I'm going to use my clothespin to kind of punch it down in there. And I'm going to go to this next one. Make sure it's tied down a couple of times real tight. And I just go with the bend of the form. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring it. You can, as I said. So I'm just going to go ahead and proceed around this ring form. And then I will show you when I go to the top how I want to do it. You just kind of want to keep them evenly spaced. This one I'm going to think I'll leave open. Sometimes leaving them open is a good idea. You can also use like your board and you just roll your, you can roll your board to measure. Or if you have a measure tape, I have one that's flexible. And this helps you to be a little quicker at it if you wish, but you can be as precise as you want. But I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and also kind of measure it with my board to see exactly where I want them. And you apply your dap. And you let that hang over a little bit because really don't want to get it on my board if I don't have to. And hopefully when we're done, this will make 10 ties on the bottom. That is our goal. You can do this with hot glue. One of my tips, this is a tip, is unfortunately I have found that hot glue, and today it, I am filming it in August, so today is a really, really hot day outside. <coughs> Pardon me. And when you use hot glue, when it gets in, sun, especially if it's between, say, your door and a storm door, the hot glue can melt. Now, once you get all of your mesh on, that's probably not going to be a problem, but I've learned this by using flowers on grapevines and decorations, that if you have it stored or it's in a container, like I took a grapevine 
down, it was a three and a half hour drive, three hour drive, down to my parents' grave. They stayed together because it was on a big saddle form. But I had grapevines for my grandmother and my uncle. And unfortunately, my uncle's grapevine had absolutely no flowers on it when I got there. I was very heartbroken because, of course, I didn't take anything with me to fix it with. So I did remake it. But um, that's one thing to really remember when, between using your DAP Rapid or some people use Gorilla Glue. I've had not. I have not had success. The most success I've had is with the DAP Rapid. So that's one thing to remember when making your wreaths. If you don't want your decorations to fall off in the heat, you either have to, you, once you glue it on, you either then have to wire it or find some other form to keep the glue from melting. So like I said, I just invested in the DAP Rapid. I heard that from a live post with Damon Oates. And to me, it's been a lifesaver because I don't want my things falling off in the sun or the heat. I haven't had any complaints. I worry continuously on the ones I made before I learned that trick. I'm going to move this one over just a little bit. I'm going to, on these last, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want 12. I want an even number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide kind of where these last two should be. They'll be a little closer than the others. But you really want to use, I use a lot of store-bought work forms that are nine sevens. For some reason, I'm always the person that gets the one with the odd number ties. But really, for your look to be some um, symmetrical, you really do, it's very best to have an even number of ties on each ring. So this one's going to be just a little smaller. And when I go to put my poofs on, what I'll do is I'm going to do 12 inch poofs and on these two, if I notice and think about it, I will make them 10 inch and that way they will be more symmetrical. That's another tip. You can always change down your poof to make sure that you have a similar look or you can stay with the other look and just, my favorite word, manipulate it. Now I'm going to let that all sit for a minute before we go to our next one because I want to move all my ties so that they're down together. I'm going to take a drink real quick. But now that you're all what I like to call bubblers, we're also known as Team Owl. I'm just going to touch those and see how dry they are. I want to give you all the tips and tricks I can to help your wreathing experience be more enjoyable. I'll be back after this dries. And we'll put the other ones on, and then we'll be ready to make a wreath. All right. Now we're ready to put on. We're going to do it three from the outside. Oops, sorry. Three from the outside, or the second one from the inside. And what I want to do, and I will end up, actually I'm going to have 24 ties when I'm done. Because I want to put this so that they are in between each of the, of the two on the outside. So it looks like our first one can go here on the ring. Anytime you can use the crossbar to help stabilize your pipe cleaner or your Chanel stem, you do not need to use your DAP glue because it will keep it mostly, they still turn, but they will not move back and forth. And that's what you're really wanting. It not to turn back and forth. So I just wrap it around this ring and then I'm going to give it one twist and it doesn't move. 
This one you don't really need to measure, or I'm not, because I want a certain look, and this is the look I'm looking for. I want them to be in between. I think that makes my um, ribbons and my ruffles, I'm gonna do this as a poof ruffle, so my ribbons and my ruffles look better. Because it just, I like the look. So that's why I do it this way. You can do it any way you want. However, this is the way I, I do not. I'm just gonna move these up into the middle because when you get a work form, this is kind of, they, they, they're all to the side, but when you pull them straight, this is how they look. And you just continue to go around until you have all of your Chanel stems or pipe cleaners on. And what I'm doing now, what I've decided to do on this one, I'm going to put the DAP glue on. And then I'm going to give it a second twist to try to, oops, that DAP glue really wasn't dry. And you do have a few, few minutes, not many. But I'm gonna put it this way. See, it's already starting to dry. It's hard to move already, so I don't really want to detach it from that ring. Once you get your mesh and everything on, they won't move. But this is just so that you don't have problems with them while you're trying to make your wreath. Later, we'll make a wreath where we make bundles, and then like we did on the witch hat, you can do that also with your ruffles, if you want to make a ruffle wreath, Oops. and uh, you can just attach that onto your wreath, and just you just make sure they're close enough together when you do it that way to make your wreath full. This one, we're going to be able to use crossbar. And I like it when that works out. Sometimes I wish they had more crossbars, but this is the way they make them. I'm going to crisscross it. I'm going to take this one under, this one over. Put this down here like this, as tight as I can. Get this one. Bring it over here as tight as I can, and I'm just going to put a twist in it. Making sure you stay on that second bar, as you can see, I almost hit the first bar. You can always clip them off if you don't like where they're placed after they're glued. And you do not have to glue them. I just find it simpler to keep them in where I want them if I put just a little dab of the dab glue on them. And I'm not gonna be making this, I'm gonna be making this on one of my lives tonight that I'm going to be on. So, since I'm not using it right away, I'm afraid it will slip around. I'm gonna move those out of the center. And I did count out 12 pipe cleaners when I started. And the reason I'm using an 18 inch form today is because of the sign. You also wanna gauge the size of your wreath form by the size of your sign. My sign's very large tonight, so I chose the 18 inch wreath form. I know you cannot get these, I do not believe, at Dollar Tree. You can pick them up relatively cheaply at your craft stores or order them on craftoutlet.com. I got these because a little gal, I got all of the stuff she had. She quit making wreaths. And these are what she used all the time. So I have a lot of these on hand. And have been wondering what to use them for. And then the sign, this sign came up. Now a lot of your work forms also, I was going to tell you, they are elevated. Which means this second ring, usually they only have two rings, sometimes three but they're elevated up higher. You can buy those through uh, craftoutlet.com if you want that kind of style. This will be more of a 
it'll be full, but it'll be flatter and we'll have a better chance of fitting between your door and your um, screen door. I so far haven't made one. Usually they come out. Sorry, I've got my fingers glued together. Better get out. There we go. Um, I haven't had a problem. I, I put them on my son's door. I put them on my door. We haven't had a problem yet. Here's another. We can use this bar. But if you make the big, big fluffy ones, like I made a cardinal Christmas wreath that you can see on my YouTube channel. And that one actually is so full and thick that I don't know. I have to measure it yet. But I'm not positive that would fit well under between the screen door and the door. It just depends on how much room you have. But usually if they're between six and eight inches, they do fit. They might get squished a little bit, but wreaths can always be fluffed. So I just don't think I want to fluff one every day if I have it on my door. I guess you could tell every visitor to fluff it as they stand at your door and wait for you to answer. We're almost done. We only have two more stems to put on. And then, like I said, I won't use this till tonight, so the DAP glue will have a wonderful chance to dry. It does dry in about five minutes. I'm sure the bottom tier will check them here in a second. I'm pretty sure the bottom ones, yeah, they're dry. And they don't allow your stems. This one's not really allowing you to turn it either, so it just depends on how much glue you get on there. Be very careful, though. You can glue your fingers together, as you saw. That was took a little bit of effort to get them apart, but at least it didn't burn. That's all I have to say, because otherwise, if you get that hot glue on you, you're going to end up with boo-boos on your finger. This is another one I did. And what happened there, what happens is it, when I pulled the glue off, because I didn't get it off right at the moment it happened, because I was filming, and if you don't get that glue off, it creates a blister, and when you pull the glue off, you will pull off the glue on, or get the skin with the, because, you know, it's a blister. So this is our last one. So that's another tip for you. Try to get that glue off right away. I know a lot of Reese people don't do that, but you need to. Otherwise, you're going to end up with big boo-boos. So this is our last tie. And now we have our wreath form made, and it's ready to make our wreath later this evening. I wouldn't use it for another 10 minutes at least, because make sure you put your lid back on good and tight, otherwise your glue will dry out, or spill all over something and you'll have a heck of a time getting it off. But that is how we make our own work form <coughs> pardon me, out of a box wreath. And like I said, later tonight when I go online and go live, I'll be able to use it for my poofs and my ruffles and all my decorations. Thank you for joining me. And remember, I will try to send out another tip, trick, or tutorial in a week. Everyone have a fantastic day, and we'll see you later.